Over 100,000 people have checked out my free Shadowlands Vigora and UI packages for all the tank specs in the game, and many have asked if I would release them for all the tanks in Dragonflight again. And this video marks the release of my packages for all six tank specs in Dragonflight that you have been waiting for, with huge improvements based off my previous work in Shadowlands. For instance, customizing sequences and abilities to track by just dragging and dropping them, and even the number of icons per row, the height, the width can be adjusted with mere sliders. Naturally, I'll keep all of them updated for free of charge just like in Shadowlands, so if you'd like to support my efforts in maintaining these user interfaces throughout the Dragonflight patches, all I ask of you is to hit the subscribe button on this video. Your subscription to the channel costs nothing, but it will mean the world to me. Moving on, the video will be split into the following parts. The first section covers the design principle of the package so you understand how this package enhances your World of Warcraft Dragonflight experience. And in the second section, I will give you a quick rundown of all the components of the Weekora packages, which is the core to how you play your tank spec. And in the third section, I will cover how to install my user interface in three easy steps. And in the fourth section, I'll teach you how to customize all parts of the user interface from the height, width of the icons, to the sequence of abilities, the types of abilities and trinkets, all within seconds without breaking the look of the package. And in the fifth section, I'll cover some of the frequently asked questions that I've received in the past two years of maintaining UI and weak auras for the World of Warcraft community. And throughout this video, I will cycle through all the footage of the six tank specs user interfaces and weak auras in action so you can get a sense of how each of them look. Let's begin with section one the design principle of the package. And I'd like to cover the purpose of my weak auras and user interface first. Like the title of the video suggests, it is meant to be the cleanest and most minimalistic UI you can find for tanks in Dragonflight. Being able to show you all the necessary information related to your tank spec in the most compact manner, so you can better enjoy and react to what is happening within the actual encounters and fights itself. And this will go a very long way in helping you become a better player. Because if your user interface is compact and centered near the middle of the screen where most of the action is occurring, you spend less time moving your eyes all over the screen trying to react to procs and juggling your rotations, and at the same time having to dodge mechanics or do mechanics. I also believe that if you have the same layout for your main and your alts, it helps to build muscle memory that makes you a better player. For instance, if you always place your interrupt or your cooldowns on a specific spot on the screen, regardless of which tank spec you're playing, whether you're new or old to it, you instinctively know where to look out for for the information you need. Now, what is a clean user interface is also subjective, and this is why the package comes with the tools for you to tailor everything to your exact taste, including the sequence of icons, the number of icons in each row, the height, the width of icons in each row, the tracking of your own new abilities, buffs, and trinkets. All four of these customization options I'll be covering in the fourth section of the video, so make sure you check that out. Another core design principle is the ease of installation. All you need to replicate the same look I have on screen here is to install three add-ons. Weak auras for the fancy spec related stuff in the middle of the screen, Elf UI for the unit frames, and details for the DPS and healing meters. The details installation by default contains the font I use for my package, Accidental Precedency. And that is all you need. Unlike my package in Shadowlands, there's no longer any need for additional add-ons to achieve the borders, the look, and the feel of the UI. Furthermore, you only need to install a single Weekora pack for each tank spec. There's no need for multiple Weekora groups for a single spec like you did in Shadowlands. It's a simple one-stop solution now. Now let's move on to the second section, and I'll run you through where everything is within the Weekora pack and the purpose they serve, so you can have a good flavor of how all of them plays out. The single Weekora pack you import for each tank spec is is made of four subgroups of weak auras. The first two groups relate to the two horizontal rows of weak aura icons. The top row tracks skills that is related to your core rotation. And the second row below it tracks your offensive cooldowns, your defensive cooldowns, your utilities, and your crowd control. Now, keep in mind, these are not meant to replace your action bars. It doesn't track every single ability. We are only tracking the abilities with a cooldown because for your abilities without a cooldown, like your filler abilities, they are always available for use. 
so there's no need to track them visually. Now, above the two rows of icons, that's the third group of Weikora's tracking class resources. You will see a thin horizontal bar that tracks all your necessary spec resources, be it rage for prot warriors, holy power for prot paladins, runic power and runes of blood death knight. It even tracks your charges and cooldowns of active mitigation like shield blocks and purifying brew. The list goes on and on, but I think you get the point. You will also notice a single big white digit in the middle of the screen that tracks the amount of class resources you have left. In this group, I also include some reminders to tank specs to use certain buffs when they run out. For example, a reminder to warriors to buff the group with Shout, or for Garden Druids to buff the group with Mark of the Wild when it runs out. Moving further up to the fourth and final group, this is your buff bars. This buff bar will show any form of procs, offensive cooldown, defensive cooldown duration you need to track, as well as any form of externals duration that your healer tosses on you. Now let's move on to the third section, how to install my Weikoras and user interface packages in three easy steps. So before we begin, make sure you have three add-ons installed. The first is weak auras, the second is LUI, the third is details. If you don't know where to download these, simply look for the tank spec of interest in the description of this video. All right, so now you know where to find the respective links for all the tank specs. You know how to install all the three add-ons like I told you to. And you probably will get what you see on screen right now. Basically a real mess. Everything is all over the place. It looks nothing like my user interface. So let's go through an exercise where I teach you step-by-step -step on how to install them in three simple steps. Now, the first thing that we need to do is to install my Elf UI profile. So to do this, you open up the Elf UI config panel by typing slash EC in your text box, and this Elf UI panel will pop up. Click on profiles to the bottom left here, and then click on import profiles. It will now prompt you to insert your string of profile. Now tap out of the game to your browser where you open the link to the external tank spec that you're trying to import. Under step one, you will be able to see an external link to my own Elf UI profile. Open up that link, hit Control A to copy all the string of text, all the random gibberish text, and then Control C to copy all that string of text. All right, tap back into the game, press Control V and basically paste the string here. You can then click on Import Now, and you will see suddenly all your frames are changed. You can see that the unit frames now has changed, you know, all the text, the overlays for your chat, the mini map, they have all changed in terms of locations. That's a signal that you did the first step correct. All right, step two, install the weak aura for the specific tank spec you're looking for. So in this case, I'm playing a Blood Death Knight. It's a very similar procedure to step one, type slash WA in your chat box it will pull up this weak aura panel. Now you hit on import to the top left here and it will prompt you to paste text below. This is when you tab out to the external link, the very same link for the specific tank spec you're looking for in the description of this video. Under step two of the page, you will find an external link to my weak aura string for the tank spec. Open up that link, press Ctrl A to select all the text and then Ctrl C to copy all the text. Tap back into the game, press Ctrl V, and it will prompt you to allow you to import. Hit the import button, let it load for a while, and you will basically see the weak aura appear on screen. So with that, your weak aura is installed. And a very quick test, you know, pressing some of my buffs, my externals, you can see the buff bar working properly here, death and decay, you can see some of the runes recharging, and basically that is essentially the installation process for weak auras. Now moving on to the third step, there's just something that's still off and you can see it's regarding details, right? Your DPS meters and your healing meters. Very similar process. So what I need to do is to type slash details space config in the chat box and it will pull up the details option panel. You wanna click on profiles here on the tab and click on import profile. It will again prompt you for a string of text. Same thing here, tap back out to the browser, the page that you had up earlier. Look under step three, you'll find an external link to my details profile. Open that link, press Ctrl A to select all the text, Ctrl C to copy, and then tap back into the game, Ctrl V to paste, hit OK, and you can name it whatever you want, so I'll just name it quasi details final. And you can see my details are essentially loaded on the bottom right. It's as simple as that. And with those three steps, you are essentially set. 
that's the installation process. All right, now that you've learned how to install, let's move on to section four, how to customize your new user interface for tanks. Firstly, let's start with the abilities being tracked here. I'm very often asked, how do I change the sequence of these abilities? For example, I want Death and Decay to appear as the first icon here on the left. How do I do that? Well, in my old package in Shadowlands, you basically have to change the triggers and stuff. It's a bit complicated. But please to tell you with the new Weak Aura packages you just installed, it's a simple drag and drop. So to do so, type slash WA, you open up the Weak Aura panel. Under Quasi, Dragonflight, Blood Death Knight or whatever tank spec you imported, click on the plus here to basically, you know, expand all the different Weak Auras you imported. And under row one rotational, you can see that Death and Decay is currently on the third slot. It's after Death Caress and Blood Boil, right? And I want it to appear to the leftmost. So all I need to do is just hold on my left click, drag it to above Death Caress, and if I press Escape or Close, you can see Death and Decay is now in the first position. It is as simple as that. The trick here is that these icons are going to appear from left to right in a descending order from top to bottom within the group of row one. This very same principle applies to row two. So you can simply just drag and drop any of these externals or cooldowns to just, you know, make them appear differently in the bottom row. And I know what your next question is. It is, what if I don't just want to change the sequence? I want to create my own abilities. I want to track a brand new trinket. How do I do that? Maybe I want to build my own spec that is not a tank. It's actually really simple. So do the same thing, press slash WA. Let's just say that currently I do not have death and decay. I delete the weak auras, right? So it's missing right now. And I want to track death and decay. All I need to do is just to right click on any of these icons I created, right click on that, click duplicate. And you can see I have a duplicate of death caress previously. Now, what you can do is to go to the trigger tab. Under trigger one, it will say, what spell are you trying to track? And in my case, it will be death and decay. I'll just simply type the name and you know you got the name right when this icon changes you can see the icon changes here all i need to do is basically rename this to death and decay now that's not all you also need to check that you're loading it correctly so go to the load tab and currently it says that this icon will load when it's in the class specialization of blood and when you know the spell death caress and we know that's wrong because we are trying to track death and decay so I renamed this to Death and Decay. So what this is telling Weak Aura to do is to load this brand new Weak Aura that you created when you know the spell Death and Decay. You can also do some other fancy stuff where you only show this Weak Aura when a certain talent is taken within your new Dragonflight talent tree. That is entirely possible as well. And so you can see this brand new created Death and Decay icon on the second slot. Now I've shown you what to do for spells. You can say, wait, what about trinkets? You haven't talked about that. Same process. So let's say we duplicate this Death and Decay and we want to track a specific trinket that I have equipped. Everything leads back to the trigger tab. Instead of tracking a spell, now you want to track an item and you want to track the cooldown progress of the item. And you can either type the name of the trinket you're tracking or you can simply type the ID. So let's see what I have equipped here. Currently on my DK, I have the Elgata's puzzle box and it's an unused trinket. I currently have it on cooldown. So what I can do is to enter the ID as you can see, 193701. So I click on this, 193701, and you can see it pops up as the puzzle box. I go to the load tab just to make sure that it's loading correctly. I don't need spell known. If I scroll down here, item equip to 193701 to tell Weak Aura that this Weak Aura for the trinket will only load when I have the trinket equipped. Then I edit the name to say trinket puzzle box. So you can name it whatever you want, right? And if I tap back out, you can see that it's now being desaturated and tracked as a puzzle box icon in the Weak Aura. And you can see this 46, 45 seconds tallies with the cooldown of the puzzle box. So when I use the puzzle box, this will go on cooldown. If you understand this principle, you can replicate this same loop using my package as a skeleton for any spec in the game, a healer, a DPS, anything you want. Now, what I've taught you above also applies to the buff bar as well. Let's say you want to track a brand new buff, right? You have a new trinket that gives you a new proc. So what you do is open the same weak aura panel and go to the first group is name self buff and target debuff or it be named as buff bar in certain groups but it's always the first group for sure. Let's say I want to track something like a brand new aura. I can duplicate any of these, go to the trigger tab, and it will basically say, what are you tracking? I'm tracking player buff, what aura name? And I simply can type the ID or the name of the aura. 
So I'll make it really simple. So let's say you hover over your current buff, right? I have the decomposing aura you can see to the top right here. The ID here is 228581. So I can input this 228581. And you can see this icon now changing. And I'll call these the decomposing aura. Check the load tab again just to make sure. So it loads under blood. And in this case, currently when the spell Dancing Room Weapon is known, I would check that off. And as I close this, you can see perpetually I'm tracking the aura, which is decomposing aura. Now, this is always on, of course, but I'm using it as an example. Just remember, everything in weak aura goes back to the trigger tab. All right, next question. Someone would ask, how do I customize the shape of these icons? Let's say I don't want it to be so rectangular-ish, or maybe I want it to be flatter in terms of its height. Maybe I want it to be more squarish. It's actually super simple. Type slash WA, open up the panel. Now, when you import the weak aura, you will see there's four groups, right? And let's say I want to change the height of the first row. I find them too tall. I want them to be, you know, a bit more squashed. All you need to do is click on the row one rotational row, this group here. Under the display tab, you can simply just use this slider here to change the height. So let's say I find 35 just too tall, right? As you can see, I can decrease the height and you can see in the middle of the screen, the weak auras are becoming slimmer. Obviously, you don't want to be too ridiculous here. So you can play around with the sliders to either make it very tall or just, you know, the height that you want. And that's how you can change the look of the rows and the icons without even knowing how to code. Just simple sliders. Now you might say, wait, then this now makes the entire package look a bit off center, right? because there's such a big gap between my resources and my second row, how do I move them around? It's also very simple. So if you click on this left group here, the row one rotational that you changed, you can use this arrow here and just nudge the group upwards so that it's now more compact. And because your second row is now so far below, you might also want to nudge this back up and now it looks way more compact, but you get the point. It's very simple to customize the height, you know, the width, and even the positions of all these groups. All right, so you might have another question, which is how do I configure the amount of icons to show in each row? So let's say currently on the bottom row, I have 10 icons and you might say, hey, I hate the look of 10 icons. Maybe I want eight icons. How do I do that? So open up slash WA. You can go to the second row here, click on this. Then under the group tab, you're looking for something called limit. And currently it says 10. So if I drop it to eight, essentially what it's telling the weak aura to do is to only show a maximum of eight icons on the second row. And so as you can see, the second row has now been reduced to eight icons. And how the logic works is that it basically displays the first eight icons from top to the bottom of the group. So if you want to move certain abilities up in the packing order, you just simply drag and drop. In this case, Dark Command is now number one in position. You can see it's now on the most left. And that's pretty much all the fancy customizations that you need to know for the new toy that you imported. And that wraps up the section. So let's move on to the final section to talk about some of the frequently asked questions that I've gotten from the World of Warcraft community ever since I started maintaining all these packages. All right, the first question is, where the hell are your action bars? Well, all my action bars are actually at the bottom of the screen. As you can see, as I hover my mouse over the bottom of the screen, you can see these are all my action bars and where all my binds actually are. I've basically configured them to show on only mouse over because I played this game for so long that I can memorize all my binds by now. And I strongly recommend that you memorize your binds too, because without looking at your binds, you can focus more on what's happening on screen and react better to what's happening on screen. Also, it has the added benefit of just making everything look way cleaner on your screen. And you might say, hey, I don't like that. I want all my action bars to be showing all the time. You can do that. Type slash EC like I showed you earlier. Go to action bars on the top left here. You can see under bar one, I have mouse over checked. Uncheck this, you can see the mouse over option will start showing all the bars the moment you uncheck them. So those are all my six action bars. As you can see, they're all unchecked. And you can just drag and drop any abilities onto the you know, action bar and you can just you know assign keybinds to them. Quick tip, if you don't know how LVUI works, you can type slash KB, which stands for keybind, mouse over any of these icons and just press the keybind that you want. So that's one way to perpetually show your action bars all the time, but I don't really like the look of it. I'm just showing you for the sake of completion. The next frequently asked question is, how do I show the GCD swipe on the weak auras? Because that's something I miss from my old action bars. So if you see, for example here, when I use death and decay, it just shows basically death and decay's duration. It doesn't show the GCD that I'm incurring in my character. This can be easily fixed in weak aura as well. So what I want you to do is type slash WA again, open up the row of icons. You need to do this for both rows, by the way, but I'll show you just using row one. 
go to the trigger tab and I want you to look through all the triggers. Every time you track anything related to a cooldown, go to extra options. Click on this wheel and you want to check show global cooldowns and suddenly everything is tracking global cooldowns. Just to be sure, scroll down to other triggers as well. Look for the same show global cooldown option just to make sure you're not missing out on anything here. You just need to do this to be thorough. Okay, now what I want you to do is observe the first row when I drop death and decay again. So when I pop death and decay, you can see this GCD swipe that's happening. You can basically see we are incurring GCDs as a swipe now on the weak aura icons. Now, I personally don't like the look of this because I want everything just to be clean and it only shows the duration of the cooldown, but some people prefer the GCD swipe as well. Moving on to the next frequently asked question, how do I resize your weak auras? I don't like them too big or I don't like them too small. What should I do? So same thing, type slash WA, click on the group that you imported. Now under the group tab here, you will see something called group scale. All you need to do is just use this slider here. You can either shrink them as such, or you can enlarge it by dragging it to the right. It's as simple as that. So depending on which monitor you're playing on, what kind of screen size, what's your resolution, you can tweak my package just to suit your needs. Next frequently asked question since we are talking about resizing. Some people will ask what resolution and what monitor size I'm playing on. I'm currently playing on a 1440p resolution on a 27 inch monitor. Currently my UI scale is 0.64. So depending on your UI scale and all these things, you might need to tweak the size of your weak aura to just suit your needs. Next question, some people ask what fonts are you using by default in your weak aura and user interface package? And the answer is accidental precedency. And you don't need to stress about knowing how to install this custom font because when you install details as an add-on, accidental precedency, the font I use, is incorporated into the game by default just by installing the details add-on. Another question that I often get is how do I move all these unit frames and all these mini-map elements? So type slash EC to open the Elf UI config, click on toggle anchors and you can see all these grids and basically rectangles pop up. So I'll show you an example. Let's say I want to move the player frame here, right? I find that it's currently maybe um, too high up in the monitor. I want to move it downwards. I can simply click on this and I can just drag it down or I can drag it up and just leave it wherever I want, right? So I click lock and you can see that it appears now in the middle of the screen. So you can use this to basically move around your UI elements. And so folks, with that, I've covered everything you need to know for my Dragonflight tank specs user interface and weak aura video. Now, in case you have any form of feedback or you need help, for example, I've missed out on an ability or you like something added or tweaked, you can raise your suggestions or ask me questions in my Discord channel. Just follow the link in the description below for this video. I will update my weak auras for bugs and fixes and waves, and I will be posting my updates in Discord on my progress. So if you want the latest weak auras, make sure to stay up to date in the Discord channel. Now, if you like my user interface and weak auras, just know that they are entirely free for your use. And if you'd like to show your appreciation, do click on the subscribe button on this video. Your subscription to this channel costs nothing, but it will go a very long way in helping me maintain the user interfaces throughout the patches for Dragonfly. Flight. I also publish other WoW related content like Mythic Plus content, so stay tuned to that. I stream on Twitch frequently, feel free to pop by and ask me questions about the user interface. A shout out to my Patreon subscribers for keeping my efforts alive. And until next time, enjoy the user interface and Wikora packages. I will see you soon.